In this video, we'll be learning how to make the 3D text fly through transition in DaVinci Resolve. My name is Brian and I enjoy making YouTube videos on DaVinci Resolve. So, if you're a fan of DaVinci Resolve, please smash the subscribe button. Let's go! This is a 4 seconds clip of a forest. Let's head over to Fusion. Click anywhere to make sure none of the node is selected. Control space. We'll add a text 3D. And we'll drag it into our viewer. Give it a text. And there are four controls that you must know in the 3D environment. The first would be this. The second would be this. The third would be this. And the fourth would be this. So let me change our color to a bright saturated red. Okay. And click on extrusion. We will give it some extrusion depth. And some bevel depth and bevel width and just like how we have pineapples on pizzas whenever we are working in a 3D environment we must definitely use the renderer 3D node so with text 3D selected control space we will add a renderer 3D then connect the output of this renderer to the output of our media in one which will magically create a new merge node and we'll drag this media out into our viewer. Now it looks horrendous. And that is because we haven't applied any lighting. So select renderer 3D and we'll enable lighting and shadows. Then we'll select text 3D and control space we'll etch we'll add a merge 3D node. So a merge 3D is basically a normal merge node, just that 3D. So with the merge 3D selected, control space, we will add a directional light. And I've done this before, so I know what is the best rotation. So I will select directional light, go to transform, and under rotation, uh, beside X, we will double click this and type 45. And of course you can try rotating like the others X, Y, and Z, but I think in my case, 45 is pretty good. So it depends on where the light is coming from in your situation. And just take note that the translation doesn't do anything to the directional light. Okay, so we'll, set, we'll select Merge 3D again, Control Space and add another directional light. We'll drag this up to make it neater and click on Transform. And this time we'll change our Y to 90. So it's looking pretty damn good. Now we'll add our final light. Select Merge, Control Space, and nope, it's not a directional light, it's a spotlight. I will bring this up here, and we'll change to our dual viewer mode. I will bring my merge to our left viewer, and I will right click here, go to Controls, and Active 2 only, and I'll select Spotlight. The Active 2 only ensures that only the selected tool is shown in the viewer, so it wouldn't be looking very messy. And I want the spotlight to be a backlight, so it will be facing the text from the back. So I will bring this all the way behind the text, like this. And notice that our spotlight is facing the other side. So we will click on Transform, and under Rotation Y, double click this and type 180, 180. And now it's facing, it's facing the right way. We'll go to controls, change the intensity, half it, and we will increase the cone angle. So now our text is looking fabulous. So now we are done with our text. All we have to do now is to animate the text to make it move. So we will click on our text 3D, and I want it to be centralized, so I will move it down a bit. Now it's in the center and we will go to the start of the clip and we will drag our text way back until it's pretty small like this or whatever floats your boat then we will go to transform sorry this transform and set three keyframes on x y and z then we'll go to the end of the clip and we will move our text closer until it until we almost bypass the entire text. So something like this. And now we will just adjust the X, Y, and Z. 
So let me change it back to single viewer and I will just click on this X, Y and Z and just scrub through. This is to fine tune the, the moving. So we want to go through the hole in the letter E. Alright, now we have completely bypassed the text. Go to Spline. Make sure Text 3D is selected. Select this checkbox beside Text 3D. And zoom to fit. Highlight these two keyframes at the end. Press F. Now we will close our Spline. And let me play it back around here. You can see that we go through the hole in the letter E. Alright, now we will bring in our second clip that we want to transit into. So click on Media Pool and drag our second clip down. And we will connect the output of our second clip to the output of our first clip, which will create a new merge node. And now our second clip is at a foreground, so it's blocking our second clip, our first clip. We will swap that by selecting Merge, Ctrl T to swap the inputs, and it's fixed. We'll select media in one, control space, polygon, search for polygon, enter, and we'll click on invert in our polygon, and we'll go to the first frame of our clip. I have to zoom in a lot to this hole in the letter E. Then I will draw a shape around the hole. Notice that I'm not making a really tight shape, and it is way bigger than the actual hole. But it doesn't matter, it just has to be bigger than this hole and smaller than the letter. Smaller than the letter, yeah. And we'll go forward a few frames and there's a handy dandy trick that you can use to enlarge it without changing the shape. Basically highlight it, hold down S and drag any point to enlarge it. So we have to keep repositioning it and increasing its size as we move along. Then when it completely bypasses the entire text, we can just cover the entire screen in our polygon. So we just make it really really big and we will cover the entire screen like this, like this. Alright, now let me play it back. Make it bigger. So you can see we transited into the next click. Now, if you are happy with this effect, you may leave, I guess. I mean, retention rate isn't that important. Actually, it is. So please stay. So, there's something that I would like to add to finesse this effect and I think it works specifically for this scenario, it looks good. So let's select media in 2 which is our second clip, control space, add a raise, enter and right around here when we can see the hole but it's not really big but it's big enough, we will increase the exposure, set a keyframe and let me, okay, let me decrease the exposure a bit, maybe 3.9. I will change the center by moving this arrow. Alright, then I will go to the end of the clip and I will peel the exposure, so make it zero. And now it's done. So let me go back to our edit page and I will just drag this further back so that the second clip is longer and wait for it to render and we shall play it back in full screen. I'm waiting. Alright, now it's completely blue, it has rendered, let me play it back. Alright, it looks amazing, so if you like this video, please like this video, and if you want to subscribe, please subscribe, if you don't want to subscribe, please don't subscribe, we'll see you next time.